the two Horuses of Kemetic Egyptian mythology. Horus was the celestial falcon and the embodiment of kingship. The conflict between Horus and Seth, the two lords, was an enduring theme in both Kemetic and later Egyptian mythology. The name Horus translates to mean the distant one, but there are two very distinct forms of Horus that appear in the Kemetic myths. These are sometimes regarded as separate gods, belonging to completely different epochs, but sometimes they are represented as aspects of the same deity. Horus the Great, or Horus the Elder, was a primeval being who initiated creation. As Lord of the Sky, his wingspan is the heavens, and his eyes were the sun and the moon. This Horus was the son of a sky goddess, either Nut or Hathor. Horus the Younger was the son of Isis, also called Aset, who grew up to avenge his murdered father who was Osiris and take his place as the ruler of Kemet. He is usually shown as a falcon-headed man, and as he represented kingship itself, each successive king of Egypt was acclaimed as a living Horus. Kemet's earliest kings were shown as hawks preying on their enemies, and many Egyptian and Kemetic deities would be represented by birds within the hawk family. The hawk cult of some of these gods, such as Nekheni, were gradually assimilated with that of Horus, and thus he becomes the almost completely dominant deity represented by that form. One of the earliest divine images known from Egypt is that of the falcon in the bark, and this represents Horus as a star or a planet crossing the winding water of the sky, and later texts paint a dazzling picture of the one of dappled plumage who opened his eyes to dispel both darkness and chaos. And like other primeval deities, the celestial falcon ultimately coalesces with the creator god and in this role he becomes Ra Harakti meaning Ra Horus of the double horizon he who triumphed over his enemies to rise in the east the union of these two powers could be symbolized by a falcon crowned with a sun disc or a sun disc with a falcon's wings When a king appeared to a subject, it was compared with the glorious rising of Horus in the horizon. The, the two lords, Horus and Set, were represented either as brothers or as uncle-nephew, and many theories have advanced to explain the origins of their combat, from memories of an ancient civil war to observations of storms or astronomical phenomena. When these two combatants are Horus the Elder, the Celestial Falcon, and Set, the Chaotic God of Storms, the conflict seems to stem from the Primeval Age, representing opposing forces coming together as one set to create order and thus order dominating or defeating chaos to start life itself. There becomes a necessity of Horus and Seth to be reconciled, and this is stressed in many mythological sources that would come later. And one of the key images of royal art was Horus as the uniter, along with Set, tying together the plants of Upper and Lower Kemet to symbolize the union of the two lands into one perfect kingdom. But at other times, the image of Set is replaced by that of Thoth, indicating that Set's role as the slayer of Osiris who was of course the father of Horus, could not be overlooked. But when this great conflict is presented as a dynastic feud between young Horus and his usurper uncle, it becomes a story where Horus must triumph, and Set must also be punished, so that a just new kingship can be established for humanity without any doubt or dissension. Horus, who was the son of Isis, was destined to be king from the moment of his conception. His epitaph, 
Horus, who is upon the papyrus, alludes to the myth that Osset hid the infant Horus in the papyrus thickets of a hidden island among the marshes. This nest of Horus was guarded by divine beings, such as a cow and scorpion goddess. The young Horus grew up to be the pillar of his mother and the avenger of his father. Advised by Aset and Thoth, Horus fought Seth in many different ways. He turned Seth's sexual aggression into his own advantage and overcame the temporary loss of power from his own eye. Horus later argued his father's case before the divine tribunal led by Gab, and ultimately Osiris was granted sovereignty over the dead and Horus sovereignty over the living. Horus, the devoted son, becomes the prototype for all funerary priests and performs a series of rituals to rise up Asar to bring him back to life. He also becomes an intermediary between the world of the living and the world of the dead. Horus is shown in the Book of Coming Forth by Day, presenting deceased souls before the throne of Osiris. The reign of Horus as the king of Kemet was considered to be the model for its subsequent reigns. The semi-divine kings who came after him in mythological history were called the followers of Horus. And in some texts, a scorpion god named ta bit becomes the wife of Horus. A passage in the coffin text makes Horus the elder and Isis the parents of four protective deities known as the sons of Horus. The festival at the Edfu temple celebrated the beautiful union between Horus the Elder and Hathor, the lady of Dendera. And in this representation, Horus is an aspect of the sun god, un uniting with this powerful goddess to renew the cosmos itself. In a mythological history of the beginning of temples, a story is told of two mysterious beings who subdued the primeval swamp by cutting down the reeds. When they struck a reed in the ground, it became a perch for the celestial falcon, who was Horus the Elder. The reed hut built to house the falcon was said to be the center of the world and the first temple ever created. In the legend of the winged disc, Horus, the distant one, takes the role usually given to the distant goddess and transforms himself into a fiery disc to blind and destroy the sun god's enemies. In ritual drama known as Triumph of Horus, Horus the son of Isis harpoons Seth in his hippopotamus form. After a series of battles by land and water, he drives Seth and his followers out of Egypt. Just as the Egyptian kings hope to drive out chaos and oftentimes foreign invaders.